How long was Neil Armstrong actually on the moon? When did Europe start speaking English? Did Marco Polo really go to China? Curiosity Stream is the streaming service for all things history, plus science, wildlife, and more. What's the real story behind the Mona Lisa? We've got that. What caused the collapse of Rome? We know. Where did we find mankind's earliest ancestor? Come find out. For the holidays, get the gift of curiosity with 25% off gift cards for your curious cohorts. It's holiday shopping season at curiositystream.com slash gift. Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com slash renew to learn more. Hello, my paranormal peeps, and welcome back to the Deep Woods Paranormal Podcast. My name is Matt Harvey. I am the founder and lead investigator with Deep Woods Paranormal. I am also the host of this podcast and a producer now. So, and in my arms to the left here, I've got little Miss Tinkerbell. She is uh, wanting up, so we're going to have her kind of sit with us, hopefully, and not yap the whole time I'm trying to talk. So, anyways... Um, so this is the Big But Only podcast on Friday. Um, as you kind of see behind me, let me go the other way. You're seeing a picture of what looks like a person or some kind of something in the background. Um, this is said to be a skunk ape, believe it or not, crossing across uh, a field. Um, maybe even looking for deer or whatever. Uh, but a gentleman had caught this, a witness had caught this. And we'll get into his story in just a few minutes, but... Amanda and I are going to be going to Florida this coming weekend. Um, not this weekend, but the following weekend. And so we're going to go visit my dad. And we're going to be in in uh, some parts of it where we're going to be are going to be a uh, skunk ape territory. I don't know if we're going to have time to actually go out and do some research or not. Um, if we do, it'll be very minimal uh, because my dad... I don't, you know, want to go visit him. So, anyways, let's get into Skunk Ape. Let me share my screen with you. And here we go. All right. So, what is a Skunk Ape? <clears throat> According to this, it stands between six and eight feet tall. Um, it's a relative of, of the North American um, Bigfoot, essentially. Uh, it derives its uh, distinct smell from a combination of skunk, moldy cheese, and goat dung. Yay. Um, it's a bipedal primate that maintains uh, an om omnivore diet and leaves giant footprints behind of at least eight in 18 inches or more. Um, so it's basically just an elusive creature, but they're saying on here. So yeah, it's, it's just like, a, it's like the cousin of a Bigfoot. I've always said there are multiple species of Bigfoot, I believe. If you look around the world, you'll find multiple types, shapes and sizes. Um, they that what they call a little foot now, um, which is basically just a like a two foot tall uh, creature that has been actually identified somewhere in like Malaysia or something like that. Need to do more research into that. But these creatures are only two feet tall. And if you look at every continent around the world, there's more and more sightings of Bigfoot-like creatures. Some of them are more human-looking. Some of them are more primate-looking. Some of them are kind of in between. Um, they're all different shapes and sizes, anywhere from two feet all the way up to maybe 20 feet. There are giants supposedly out there. And you got to take all this with a grain of salt. So just bear with me. But this is just based off my research and my my experiences. Uh, this whole podcast is based off that. And also we'll cover, you know, different experiences that we have. Well, for example, last week I talked about going to look for a Bigfoot in a, in a cemetery. 
And that was pretty interesting to find the footprints and find the tree structures and find other things. So, yeah, I mean, is it possible for there to be some kind of a creature out in Florida? Um, definitely possible. Um, so let's just kind of, let's see here. Let's go into, hold on a second, bear with me. We're typing in skunk ape on the computer under Google search. I'm going to images. If you're watching, if you're watching the podcast, you can see this. If you aren't, you you can't see this. I'll just kind of describe this. So here's a story I heard. Um, nobody really knows if this is true. What happened was a digital picture, printed digital picture, um, appeared in an envelope and with a note sent to a police department somewhere in Florida. <clears throat> this, I'm going to kind of generalize this lady's story. Supposedly, she heard a noise out in her backyard and went out on her patio and turned the light on. And as she turned the light on, she saw this. Uh, there's two stories that she saw this or she went out there and it was pitch black and she had a flash photography. And so essentially she uh, took a picture and this is what she caught. So here's another photo of the skunk ape. Oops. That didn't work. Um, supposedly crossing a field. Um, here's another one. It's kind of blurry. Uh, but you can kind of go through this guy's pictures. Um, I remember hearing about this. Supposedly there was a bunch of them hunting deer. And they were basically snapping the legs off the deer, which is a total Bigfoot thing. Um, but I mean, there's just lots of pictures of these things. Some of them look like gorillas. Some of them look more like an actual, you know, like what you appear, I think of, uh, if you look, we're thinking Bigfoot, just a tall, by hair, bipedal, um, creature. So this looks more like a baboon. Um, but I, there, I do, if you look at Gigantopithecus, there was four different types. There was a blonde one, a brown one, a black one, and a red-headed one, a red fur one. Um, Gigantopithecus, you know, in our area, is more like the brown and the black and maybe the tan. <clears throat> it seems like the skunk ape is more of that reddish color, more like the orangutan or chimpanzee-looking creature. Not as much human-like features, um, could it be some kind of form of ape that basically changed um, over time? I don't know. So let's keep going through the reports. <clears throat> so there's been multiple sightings of skunk apes in Palm Beach, Florida, um, Hernando, Pasico, Monroe, Coll and Collier counties. Um and this is actually from Lauren Coleman, who is a very avid Bigfoot searcher, researcher. He's very well known. He's very uh, credible. So if it's coming from him, I believe that. Uh, this shows a picture of the Big Cypress National Preserve. Um, I think they're, they're down in those preserves. I think that's just where they are. So let's cruise over here. Okay, so you guys have all seen my map before if you've watched the video podcast. And you can see all the pens all the way across basically the United States. I'm, I had California pinned really well. I had uh, Arizona, Utah, and, and Nevada. I don't know what happened to that map. Um, Google continu continually messes with my pens for some reason. I don't know why. Um, maybe they're removing those pens because I have them marked as Bigfoot locations. I don't know. So... Um, my dad actually lives down here in Pensacola, and there's, I thought there was a report. There was a report somewhere around his area. I had a pen somewhere over here. Again, I told you they mess with my, with my pens all the time. But, okay. So Pensacola is probably an area where they could be. Um, Palm Beach, you can see all this green. Anywhere there's this green, is 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 a good 
position for them. A little tiny bit of research I did looking up reports has them anywhere from central uh, Florida um, all the way down to actually the tip of Florida, believe it or not. <clears throat> Supposedly there was a sighting down in Key West, which I'm not so sure I believe. But like here's one, Collier County. This is a very large area. What's here? Why would they be here? Well, there's the Big Cypress National Preserve. Again, just a giant area where people are not supposed to hunt. Uh, I would imagine there's probably deer and other wildlife for them to eat here. Or they're just eating leaves and stuff like that. So if you live in a, in a swamp, there's going to be a lot of stuff to eat. Um, they could be eating snails. They could be eating turtles. They could be eating lizards, snakes. Who knows? Uh, let's see where there's another report. So over here. So this is Jonathan Dickens State Park. Uh, again, another location where it's it's basically just a big um, reserve. If you look kind of west of there, you have the North Fork um, River. I can't really pronounce that. It's a too hard name to, to understand. But this area is, looks like it's undeveloped. A huge area of undeveloped area. And then this looks like it's pretty undeveloped as well. There's a there's camp over here. There's camping trails. And then there's the ocean. Now, I've heard of Bigfoot splashing around in the ocean on the Texas-Louisiana border. I have not heard anything about that in Florida, but I will be looking into that further as the week goes on, I'm sure. All right, so let's go back out and find some more Bigfoot reports. Let me find my pens. Okay, so here's one over here about Central, Te uh, sorry, Central Florida. <clears throat> Sarasota. What's in Sarasota? Well, let's take a look. Where did my pin go? Okay, that didn't work. Okay, so Sarasota. I'm just trying to find my pen. So out here, away from the people, because everybody's up stacked along the beach here, you have um, another state park. And you have all this just territory of places where there looks like there's some fresh water and stuff like that. And then there's not a lot of human encroachment in this area. So here's an environmental park. Um, down below that, south of that, and then you uh, have m multiple forests in this area. I can just look and see. I mean, this whole area, I would imagine when they were on the coast at some point in time, and they probably, as human development happened along this coast, they probably moved inland, and they're probably living in these forests. Let's look for another one. That's Orlando, probably be in Orlando. So here's Hernando County. Let's take a look at this. Uh, let's see. You have a wildlife management area down by the water here. You have the, another wildlife management area just north of that. Um, you have a state forest um, and another wildlife management area. I mean, they're just big chunks of forested area. I mean, people think Florida is just this um, beach, but it's not. It actually has quite a bit of forest and rainforest and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Everglades and stuff, where these things would go into. These are, these creatures are probably in places where humans don't want to go. It's probably swampy. It's probably stinks. Um, it's probably really rough going. 
I would imagine if you stepped into the mud, you'd probably sink in pretty far. Um, you know, these Bigfoots probably have webbed toes, I would imagine, um, so they can kind of maybe even swim. But, yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, let's see where else is there another one. Here's another one. Okay, this is just a pen that I put on here um, because I got a report. This is an actual report. Uh, and this is out in the middle of nowhere. It's right next to a road, probably a road crossing. And again, I mean, just look at all of the the green all around this. Um, could the Bigfoot have been just kind of cruising along, cruising across the road to get to the other side? Yeah, there's a lot of bodies of water out here. I imagine they're probably looking for water. So, yeah, I mean, Central and South Florida seem to be really good areas for them. Another place. Let me see if I can find that. That's my dad's house. It's this one. I don't know why that's on the map. But I was reading about an area over here. The um, Appalachian. I can't even read that. Appalachian. Appalachia. River wildlife. And I'm guessing that's refuge. There's a huge refuge here. And it kind of comes down around as, as the panhandle kind of goes out in Florida. It kind of comes around that corner. And that's just a big open green area. I mean, that's probably thousands and thousands of miles. Um, maybe not thousands, maybe hundreds and hundreds of miles of just forested area, probably that nobody even wants to go into. I would have to imagine. I would guess it's swampy and gross and stuff like that. So. How long was Neil Armstrong actually on the moon? When did Europe start speaking English? Did Marco Polo really go to China? Curiosity Stream is the streaming service for all things history, plus science, wildlife, and more. What's the real story behind the Mona Lisa? We've got that. What caused the collapse of Rome? We know. Where did we find mankind's earliest ancestor? Come find out. For the holidays, give the gift of curiosity with 25% off gift cards for your curious cohorts. It's holiday shopping season at curiositystream.com slash gift. It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper? A woo -er, a hand clapper, a high-fiver. I kind of like the high-five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At ChumbaCasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino-style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses, so don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. BGW. Void or prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. Ch -ch 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 -chumba. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Ch -ch 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 -chumba. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Let's get back into, let's see, this. All right. So that picture was taken by Dave uh, Sheely. He says he first saw a skunk cape in 19, uh, sorry, 1973 when he was only nine years old. Uh, a few years after his father discovered a huge set of footprints, he was deer hunting with his brother in a big Cypress National Preserve. Uh, he said it was walking across the swamp and my brother spotted it first. Uh, but I couldn't see it over the grass. It wasn't tall enough. My brother picked me up and, and, and I saw it about 100 yards away. It looked like a man, but completely covered with hair. So, blah, blah, blah. so now he owns a museum, which is awesome. We may have to go check this out. I'm looking forward to seeing if we can go see him. Just a minute, blah, blah, blah. Okay, here's another report. Just after midnight on January 9th, 1974, Richard Lee Smith slammed his car into something near the intersection of U.S. Route 27 and Hollywood Boulevard on the eastern edge of the Everglades in uh, Pembroke Pines. 
Smith told the Florida Highway Patrol that he initially thought he'd hit a man in a dark in dark clothing. He was stunned when a seven or eight foot tall creature lifted itself off the road, roared at him, chased his car, and uh, so I guess Smith gunned it and took off, and then basically reported the incident. It says over the next few hours, drivers in the area reported seeing a limping giant walking along US 27. Officers were dispatched at 2:12 a.m. Uh, in Halea Gardens. A Halea Gardens patrolman reported a huge hairy creature limping along the road a few miles from the accident. Um, before it disappeared into the bush. It says at dawn, they searched the, the swamp with two helicopters, but failed to find anything. Here's another report. <clears throat> Vietnam War veteran and former police officer Charles, um, I'm, I'm sorry, sir, but I'm going to mess your name up, uh, Stoke Stokeman. His wife, Leslie, and three children lived on the ocean side near Marker 94.5 on Key Largo. On July 14, 1977, Stokeman and three of his uh, and his three-year-old son Charlie were collecting bottles in a thick red mangrove behind their home when they caught sight of an enormous eight or nine-foot skunk ape. It had a huge head and shoulders, uh, long fur, and it stank like a wet dog. And that's typical of a Bigfoot. They smell nasty they can smell nasty sometimes i think they have their a gland that secretes that um the noise he made was a high-pitched wailing so he so stokeman cleared 13 feet of brush all around his home to discourage a return visit but the overpowering stench of the skunk ape persisted over several nights then a local law enforcement received a call about a massive creature crouching behind, beneath the cover of a shed at the um, Stokeman property. Um, and Roan County Sheriff Deputy Bill Haas, former Marine Patrol Captain uh, Jack Gillen, and Sergeant Randall Chin from the, from the Plantation Key substance um, substation investigated it. Uh, let's see. So I guess they, Mrs. Uh, Stockman fled to the ho homestead with her three children after catching a glimpse of the creature uh, 30 feet outside her bedroom window. And that's typical. Big, Bigfoots are seen kind of glimpsing in people's windows. They didn't find any traces of it. But he slept alone with his shotgun for almost a month before rejoining his family in the in Dade County. Okay, so here's another one. Here's a more recent one. I know you're going, okay, Matt, this is like 30 years ago, but I, I can't seem to find any newer reports. So I'm just kind of going off the websites I found with any kind of reports. So here's another report. At 2 p.m. on Wednesday, July 16th, 1997, Steve... Uh, Good bread, a guide uh, for Pelican Tours, was driving a bus with 30 tourists along tour, uh, Turner Red, sorry, Turner River Road in Big Cypress, uh, just east of Opechi. He was stopped, and if I'm butchering these names, guys, and you live in Florida, I apologize. So if you're listening to this, you know, please don't send me an angry message saying, Matt, you, miss a, you can't pronounce half the words you're trying to say. So anyways, um, he was stopped at a wooden bridge when he observed a large creature standing erect behind some bushes approximately seven yards away. Uh, it was about seven feet tall with thick brown hair covering its whole body. The creature was rocking back and forth, shaking the bushes, and appeared irritated at their presence. I've experienced that same thing. Yep, but mine was a little taller and a little wider. Um... Goodbread and his passengers observed what they be, believed to be a skunk ape for at least 15 minutes. Wow. 
he tried to persuade the tourist with a telephoto lens on her camera to, to exit the bus and take photographs, but she refused. I don't blame her. Um, <laughs> he, he figures out good book, good bread, figured out it was probably a good idea that nobody got off the bus after that. He drove away um, with the creature still in sight. Um, even though Goldberg has always believed in the possibility that Skunk Ape existed, he had shaken, he was shaken by the experience and refused to advertise or ex exploit the Skunk Ape with his tours. And that's cool. You know, if you're doing tours and you're doing Bigfoot tours or ghost tours or whatever, I don't really think you're exploiting anything. I think if you're doing it right, you probably are going through and probably telling the history of the location. You're probably um, telling the story of the people that lived there that died that now are, are passed away and are ghosts. Or you're basically telling, you know, reports of Bigfoots that have happened in that area. So I don't, you know, you're using your time. You're giving your time to show people that are interested in something like that what happened. And you're letting them go out and ex experience that area for themselves. And maybe they have a sighting of a ghost or a Bigfoot or whatever it is, UFO. Anyways, <clears throat> that's just my two cents. Uh, let's see. So less than a week later, at 7.45 a.m. on June 21st, 1997, real estate agent Jan Brock spotted a skunk ape across, from, a, a across in front of her while driving on Burns Road in Big Cypress. She described it as a very shaggy-looking, maybe six and a half or seven foot feet tall. Uh, Fifteen minutes after Jane, Jane Brooks' encounter, Orchope Fire Chief, Vince Dore photographed the same skunk ape after it entered the forest near his home. At first, I thought it was a bear, but bears don't stay up on two legs all the way um, this thing was. 20th century reports of skunk ape in Palm Beach County are numerous. Okay, bear with me for a second. So yeah, I mean, there's just there's one from here's one from 2000 on December 29th, 2000, the Sarasota Sheriff's Department received an anonymous letter with two. Okay, yeah, this is the one I was telling you about. This is the picture. So this is the story. Let me let me read it to you um, word for word so you guys can hear it like from the horse's mouth here. Okay, so on December 29, 2000, the Sarasota Sheriff's Department received an anonymous letter with two enclosed photos from a woman reporting to show what her husband believed was an escaped orangutan um, that had been stealing fruit from their back porch. She never mentioned anything about a skunk ape, but all the, the photo sure, clearly shows a large primate that is definitely not an orangutan. So it's much bigger than an orangutan. The letter began, in closed, please find some pictures I took. My husband thinks it's an orangutan. If is something missing, is someone missing an orangutan? The woman wrote that two nights it had been taking apples her daughter brought down from up north off their back porch. The photos were taken on the third night after she went outside to investigate um investigate a rep, rep, repetition of deep whoop noises. She aimed her camera at something that moved in the darkness behind the saw, saw palmetto, which is a bush, um, at the near, at the rear of her property. After quickly snapping two photos, each accompanied by a blinding flash, a creature retreated into the woods. The woman wrote that it was awful smelling and it lasted long after it left the area. She leashed her dogs in the backyard and, ne and never returned. Hmm. She signed off, um, God bless, and I prefer, prefer to remain anonymous. Interesting. All right, guys. So, yeah, if I can find some more 
recent reports, I would. But let's see. I mean, they're all through this whole area here. I mean, you can I, I know there's reports in the panhandle up here. I just know there are. Unfortunately, my my uh pins are gone. But if you look up here also, Georgia has Bigfoot reports too. This whole area. So this is incomplete. You kind of see if you're looking at the map, here's Louisiana coming down. You have Arkansas up here. It's also incomplete. Uh, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, and Georgia, and, of course, South Carolina. Uh, I just did a podcast with a gentleman today from South Carolina. In fact, I have a um, witness interview tonight um, later on about uh, a Bigfoot report out here in South Carolina or multiple sightings. I'm looking forward to uh, talking to him, and then maybe in the future we'll get to go out and actually meet him and, and uh, go out and research the areas that he's had ex experiences in. So, all right. <clears throat> but, yeah, I mean, if I'm looking at this map and I'm following what I know, when it comes, you know, basically there should be a bunch of reports all through here and then down into this area, all the way down, actually, to the tip makes sense and then coming back up this way and then across of course this way this whole east coast should have lots and lots of reports in my opinion um, based off my research and if you looked at my map closely uh, i've hinted a couple of times at what i'm looking at i don't want to give that away because i don't want other people to know and if they already know they already know so um i have a secret yeah pretty much um, i have a theory on Bigfoots and their travels and how they get around, uh, what they're, how they're getting around, where, you know, how they know where to go. Uh, so anyways, but yeah, we'll be going to Florida. If you're in Florida, if you're in the panhandle here, um, up by um, Pensacola or, or whatever, and you've had a Bigfoot sighting, my cell is 979-250. 0072. We'll, we're going to be in Florida um, Thursday night, probably all the way through next Monday. Um, again, we're going to spend most of our time with my dad. Um, but, you know, if you want to talk to us about a Bigfoot report out here in the patent handle, uh, we'd be happy to listen to you. And maybe next time we come out, we'll do uh, some kind of research in your area. So, again, my cell is 979. Two five zero 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 seven two, and you're like, well, Matt, why are you giving that out? It's all over the internet. My uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. I mean, I my phone number is our website. My my cell number is everywhere. So, uh, and most people are nice enough to only call if they really have a report. So, all right, guys, I'm gonna let you guys go. Um, you guys have a great weekend. Uh, I will be interviewing a gentleman uh, next week. He's an actor and uh, just an all-around paranormal guy. Uh, I'm looking forward to interviewing him and talking to him about some of his experiences. Um, so, hold on one second. What is this gentleman's name? We're going to be interviewing... Why did it disappear? Why are you not letting me see? Here we go. Bo Roberts. Um, we're going to be interviewing him next week. So if uh, you're interested in, in uh, listening up, we appreciate it. Again, if you guys can like and share our podcast, uh, share it on Facebook, share it on social media, any social media, uh, we appreciate it. We're on Instagram. We're on all kinds of different things. You can come over there and message us anywhere. Uh, but we appreciate you guys. And uh, again, thank you again for your support. And we'll talk to you next time. It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper? 
a woo a hand clapper, a high-fiver. I kind of like the high-five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At ChumbaCasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino-style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses, so don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VGW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.